Centuries ago, a legendary interdimensional being known as Zordon came to the city of Angel Grove to establish a command center for his never-ending struggle against evil. With the aid of his trusted assistant Alpha-5, the Noble Master sought out six extraordinary teenagers and gave them the power to transform into a superhuman fighting force. In time of great need, the young heroes could use their powers to call upon colossal assault vehicles known as Zords. The identity of the six remained a guarded secret. Today, that tradition continues. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are reviewing Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, here on Showtime. Actually, we'll be reviewing two movies. We're also going to be reviewing Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. And uh, joining me, I am your host, Marcus Shadow. Joining me is the CEO of the X-Pound. And actually, he also happens to be the head administrator of Ranger Vision. Check it out, www.rangervision.com. James Phoenix. Also around Ranger Vision is called Phoenix Ranger. And also happens to be a member of the exclusive Power Force, by the way. Ding! Thanks, <clears throat> We also, I also He's have. Dylan just a pound. <laughs> <laughs> no, but James did. Oh, what? <laughs> I didn't even hear that, so I'm gonna ignore it. Yes, please do. But um, also joining us from <laughs> such hit web shows as uh, the Gaming Zone and the Comic Zone, we have Chris, aka the Mole. Hello, and see ya. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> Um, also, to round out our cast of regulars, we have the stay-at-home dad gamer, Richter Hammer. Hello. <clears throat> and uh, we actually have two special guests today. Um, one is a producer on this site. He will be uh, producing a couple of shows. Uh, he is also the tech administrator of Ranger Vision. We have Aeon. Aloha, baby! <laughs> He's also those, politically insane. <laughs> yes, and for those counting, he is not from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I come for the land down under. Land down, no, I'm not going to sing that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, rounding out, yes, and rounding out our cast of misfits is uh, my fellow super moderator from Ranger Vision. I, I am a super moderator there. Um, but so is this man, and he goes by the name of Nero Rossi. Greetings, Earthlings. And for those trying to find you, Marcus, you should mention that on Ranger Vision, you happen to go by Common Rider Decade. I do, I do. And, and Aeon <laughs> goes by... Is it Aikawa, Aikawa Hajime! Yeah. A.K.A. Common <laughs> Rider Chalice! Yeah, or just call him Tachi. Anyway, <laughs> yes, his, his former username is a Sakuya Takibana, hence where we get the Tachi <laughs> nickname. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, A.K.A. Common Rider Garin. Both uh, Mr. Hammer and Mr. Mole are also members on that board. Mole is Mole. And um, Mr. <laughs> Hammer is no. Alvin Richter on there. No, I am Chris, a.k.a. the Mole. Same thing. We need to get names straight, don't we, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do, Chris, a.k.a. the Mole. Thank you. Anyway, this is, <laughs> in fact, the review for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. And uh, we will kick things off with the story of the movie. And um, since Mr. Phoenix did such a great job with the opening crawl, why don't you tell us what this movie is about? Do you want me to use the intro voice? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, you know. <laughs> okay, normal voice. Well, essentially, uh, the film came out back in 1995, uh, right around the third season of the television show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It was a, a huge hit, and so... Uh, 20th Century Fox, the, one of the affiliate companies of the Fox Television Network that aired the show, was contracted to uh, partner with Saban Productions to make the film. So the film was produced in Australia over a, I believe it was a four, about a four-month period, and the film is actually a separate, uh, it's one of the, a parallel dimension to the television program. Uh, it's not canon with the show, as many of the events that occur in the film are um, occur Rehash. different, yeah. Are essentially occur in an alternate version in the four-part uh, special known as Ninja Quest, 
from the second season of Power Rangers. Third season. So, third so what you're trying to say is this is almost. What you're trying to say is this is almost like I don't know an Elseworld story, and there's one up available now on Comic Zone. <laughs> yes, there is, and it's a very good review. I've watched it. I recommend it. But yes, this is effectively an Elseworld story for Power Rangers, just about a way things might have happened. Um, in the movie, we see the six Power Rangers, those being Tommy the White Ranger, Rocky the Red Ranger, Aisha the Yellow Ranger, Adam the Black Ranger, Billy the Blue Ranger, and Kimberly the Pink Ranger. And after some initial events that we'll more get into, uh, effectively in Israel that an an evil being known as Ivan Ooze, who was imprisoned in the Earth's core 6,000 years ago, is freed when Lord Zed and Rita find the egg after construction workers accidentally unearth it in a construction site. Once Ivan is free, he seeks to rebuild his ectomorphicon machines. Giant robots, or swords if you prefer, because they're effectively his version of swords, to effectively conquer Earth and then the rest of the galaxy to take up where he left off 6,000 years ago when he was in prison. Therefore, the Power Rangers, uh, of course, go on a mission to stop him. Unfortunately, Ivan attacks and destroys their command center and leaves their mentor, Zordon, on his deathbed of crystals. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> therefore, the Rangers must journey to the far-off planet of Phaedos and locate something known only as the Great Power, the only power in the galaxy that might have a chance of saving Zordon's life and stopping Ivan Ooze. Is it true love? <laughs> no, I could sing the power a... of love here, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's not like true love. It's, it's not true love because Power Rangers wasn't owned by Disney yet. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Burn. See, uh, I, I, that's that's essentially the plot. That's the plot plot of the movie. I didn't. I didn't know if you wanted me to go through like a whole detailed plot or, no. or what. No, that's fine. We can we can okay. pick it apart and stuff later. Um, as far as Zornan is concerned, I thought I assumed he was lying on a bed of essentially shards from the tube when the tube exploded or broke or whatever. That's plausible. Well, his that's what I thought. More but like they're too light. neat looking. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, I, I thought it was. Yeah. Honestly, I think I'm not positive, but I think when you see him in the tube, the crystals are actually at the bottom of the tube, like pointed upward, like he might have fallen and crashed on the, the crystals, which broke them. Ah. Uh, yep. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought they were supposed to be up at the bottom of his tube when it's hollow. But... Yeah, they were. They were like a little mountain. Yeah. Uh, okay, if he'd fallen onto shards of crystals, shouldn't it be like a Mortal Kombat pit scene and it just impale him? Yes. Oh, Maybe that's <laughs> under his moo moo or something, and we just can't see it, and that's why he's breathing so heavy and dying. His moo moo. Yeah, that's why he looks he like one of the kids moon. from Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow! You did uh, not go there, boy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll try and be a star. The next time does not we'll steal a card. All the comments of Chris gave them all. <laughs> yes. Um. Another thing I wanted to mention too is when when Ivan Ooze is brought out of the when they open the fucking container where he is at and the egg comes up and he comes out did anyone else think and this is the first thing i thought of when i saw that was ah after ten thousand years i'm free time to conquer earth <laughs> was that the only one who thought that wait a minute wait yeah she does say ten thousand years right yes mm. and, she, know, and she knows ivan ooze who is only trapped for six thousand yeah I was okay. gonna say. No, um, it was I, actually Zed who knew of Ooze. Oh, okay. Yes, because I don't know when they go to free him. Zed is talking about how is, is oh, describing okay. for two thousand years. He's been yeah, he's, uh, yeah, Zed is revering Ooze, saying that he's heard of this guy and he knows how many he has. And Rita doesn't believe him at all until they okay. free him and he starts flirting with her. And then she warms up to him until later in the movie when he tries to take over their palace and she talks a lot of crap and he finally gets fed up and seals her mouth with the Ooze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Finally, someone shut her up. And really, exactly. timelines and stuff mean nothing in this alternate world, or That's logic it. at certain times. Example, Ivan Ooze was trapped in that egg, and yet he still knew about the Brady Bunch reunion. Yeah, I know. How what did he was know? up with that? <laughs> did someone just shout it down to him? Oh, in case I, anyone's I trapped down there, you're missing them. Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the things that I have missed! The Black Plague! The Spanish Inquisition! <laughs> the Brady Bunch reunion. The reformation of X Pound. 
<laughs> he went yeah, to the so future? <laughs> he did. Oh, okay. In there you the go. year 2000. <laughs> no, you can't do that anymore. He doesn't own that pit anymore. I know, I know. Was there uh, anything else about the story that anyone wanted to bring up? I think Maul wanted to mention he didn't like the story because it meant the Green Ranger potentially didn't exist. No, I said that, that was one little thing I didn't mind because it potentially means the Green Ranger didn't exist. But overall, the story of this film, uh, it's cheesy, it's it's bad, but it, it's yeah, it's works. still enjoyable. It's still mm-hmm. enjoyable. It's in cohesive. Relation to, in relation to the actual story, I'm going to mention some more about that when we get to the uh, behind the scenes bit because it was quite a bit of story that was cut out left on the editing room floor. Mm. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, Unless I thought the Ivan I mean, Ooze plot I, was better than that, like, the kid. <laughs> Just throwing him in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to the kid later. <laughs> well, that's part of the story, there. so I don't know. As far as the story yeah, that's concerned, the I We're think not there yet. this version of it was better than what they did in the TV series. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. We're giving a cho- Let's see. We're giving a choice... We're giving, we're giving a choice between sexy warrior of the planet Phanos in a bikini and <laughs> Ooh, evil makes me so angry! <laughs> Dudley do right in blue armor. Yeah, there's a reason they use the character, which I understand, but yeah, no, this was better. Uh, though I'm, I would have much preferred um, the Mariska Hargitay version. Yeah. After you told me about that, I I looked it up and yeah, that would have been. Great. I tell, I tell you what, Marcus, I'll do you a favor. Since we're talking about it, um, I I will send you a picture of that that you can put up while we're talking about it here. Hey. <laughs> He's already got it on his desktop background. Oh, I'm, I'm sure kidding. he does. I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, honestly, again, we'll get we'll, 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 we will get to that in the behind the scenes section. Yeah, I, I wish oh, really? say I had actually done something aside from swinging beat sticks around. <laughs> it's like yes, the Blowing whistling of the face. sticks makes the Tengu's fleet. What? <laughs> really? Well, all fairness, that's actually call me an erection. <laughs> <laughs> True. And in all fairness to the sticks thing, that's a lot of animals can't stand the sound of Sonics. So you know, a, a loud high pitch will make them run away. So that was clearly the case with the Tengas. And as Mo can, and as Mo can attest, and it can have the same effect on symbiotes. <laughs> but I can also point out. As he mentioned, they may not like the sound of Sonics, but there is a Sonic review up now on Gaming Zone. Hey! <laughs> hey, yo! Plugging does, within another show! <laughs> does that animal like the sound of that Sonic? Tune in and find out. Indeed. Indeed. But anyway, moving on. Let's I'd, say that video has, I'd say that video, in sound-wise, has a nice ring to it. Uh, hey, yo! Okay, enough of the puns. <laughs> well, yeah, well, this now... isn't Samurai. Enough <laughs> the puns! Oh, oh. Yeah. Could say when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, like I said, you could say when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog, I can't bear it. I'm sorry, did I do it wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the cinematography, how things were presented and shot, and yeah. So, what what did you guys think about the cinematography? We can also put the um, fight choreography and stuff in here if you wish to discuss that. So, opinions, anything? What did you think of how it was shot? I thought the cinematography in this movie was not the best I've ever seen, but not bad either. And I'm a snob. I said, is, is this also including design? No. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the, the cinematography was not bad. I mean, I, I think the thing is, you gotta remember this, the director of this film was not one of the directors from the TV show, I don't believe. I believe it was a 20th Century Fox director. However, I'm also willing to show that Shuki Levy had a lot of, and Hames Bond himself, had a lot of input into what was going on. But um, as I'll mention when we get to the behind-the-scenes section, the director did make quite a few stupid decisions to start out that were later rectified. Right. But, uh, what, the overall product we got, the cinematography was very good considering what they had to work with in terms of the Zords and everything. Uh, now, initially when they wanted, if you look at some of the shots after the Rangers returned to Earth from Phanos, where they're on the street full of debris, uh, <laughs> Those shots were actually shot on a street with the debris around them. That's an, they're actually in Sydney. the middle in the middle of Sydney for that scene. And Sydney. they initially wanted to shoot all of the exterior shots in the city that way when they were actually in the city and just have um, large versions of like the Zord feet or whatever to, to be or the the um, the ectomorphicon feet. 
But mm-hmm. unfortunately, the combination of time ran out and lack of budget, they couldn't do it. And so aside from that one scene, the rest of the scenes in the city are actually computer generated in. Mm-hmm. I will say, when it comes to the cinematography, in my opinion, it's better than the shows. I'm sorry, it's everything in this film yeah. looks oh, yeah. pretty by much far, better than the far. films. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Except that tell, I don't tell. know about the, the fight, chore- fight choreography. I can't speak. Um, because to me, it felt like the fight choreography in this movie was more Hollywood. It was more stage, whereas in the shows, you know for a fact <clears throat> when the um, rangers are like not morphed. You know for a fact that they choreographed their own stuff because most of them were martial artists. You know for a fact JD, JDF <laughs> choreographed half his fights. You know for a fact – Johnny Bosch choreographed half his fights. You know for a fact Steve Cardenas choreographed half his fights. But in this yeah. movie, it seemed like it was more what you'd expect from Hollywood choreography, and I kind of didn't yeah. like that. See, to remember play when Tommy first co- showed up? Yeah, remember mm-hmm. when Tommy first showed up? He was at least a third damn black belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. which is what to- JDF was at the time. Yep. Hey, Hi, Chris. Yep. Uh, I was going to say to play devil's advocate, I actually prefer that. I prefer it looking more Hollywood when I'm watching a movie because the TV show, as cool as it is, seeing them do the kicks and stuff, I'm sorry, and I know it's going to offend some of the fans, the TV shows always looked like crap. The early ones did, but that's because lack of budget and stuff. All well, not just that. This, when, they, when they first put the show together, it was a real cheapy thing. They thought maybe they'd get a couple. Of, I mean, even even when, after the first season became a big success, I remember at, I was watching one of the Power Morphicon panels, and I believe it was Tony Oliver doing his excellent Haim Saban impression. <laughs> who said that at one point, he was talking to Haim Saban in his Egyptian accent. And he said to him, wait, we're going to, we're going to get five years out of this show, maybe. And so they really didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I thought maybe they'd get one season, maybe a couple of seasons out of it, and that would be it. They didn't know it was going to become this big 20-year, multiple-movie, million-dollar franchise. They had no way to know. So, mm-hmm. it, of course, it was very cheap. That's why that, that was why they had to orchestrate a power transfer in the middle of season two, because the act, three of the actors demanded more money and got thrown out. <laughs> but I wasn't just on about the early seasons. Even now, <clears throat> if you watch one of the series now, for example, the current one at this time is Super Samurai. If you watch Super Samurai and you look how it is, and then you watch an actual TV show that's currently on the air, something like, I don't know, like Once Upon a Time or something like that, that one clearly has better cinematography. Oh, yeah. It's like Power Rangers always seems like it's like at least like eight years behind what the current trends actually are. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is true. This is true. But again, it's, it, it's also a non-union thing. So as a result, you know that's that's part of it. They can't. There's a lot of things they can't do because they're non-union. True, true. But anyway, back to the movie. Is it, anyone else have anything to say about the cinematography and choreography? I did like the uh, the fight scene when they're right outside the monolith. I thought that was pretty badass. With the rock guardians. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah that was, and that was they, they, they actually seemed like a real threat. As opposed mm-hmm. to the Tankos. Yeah, the, yeah. That's filmed either in the Northern Territory or in Queensland. I forget which. Mm. Yeah, I, I believe it was North, I, I, I believe it was Northern Territory, but I could be wrong. But um, yeah, that, that, was, scene, that and that scene was actually that, that scene was probably good because they they had to rush through it, so they pro- they did it given the time they had because that was that was one of the scenes was not originally in it when they did the initial set of filming, and that was one that they added at the last minute and had to film. So. Considering what they did, it came out. It came out pretty well. That was probably one of the scenes where they realized the talent they had in the cast and said, "Yeah, can you guys make something up?" <laughs> hmm. I wouldn't mm-hmm. have put it past yeah. them. And then I, I could see like JDF, Steve, and uh, Johnny just putting their heads together, saying, "Okay, I guess we're gonna have to choreograph this fight scene." Um, yeah, let's do this, this, that, this, that. Okay, good. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, dude, I still dude. love, I still love the puns they pull off in that fight scene. Ex- that's, Such that's as the elevator going up. Yeah, elevator going up. Elevator going down. Yeah. Talk about splitting <laughs> headaches. And, I, and honestly, that makes sense because I can see them talking about this and JDF going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna, you know what it is? I'm going to have you guys stand in there and I'm going to jump out of this tree and spin eight times in the air and kick the dude in the chest. Eight <laughs> <laughs> ball on the pocket. <clears throat> you see, I, I, don't, I don't know if people agree with this or not, but my possibly my favorite scene in that film is the start of the film. It's not necessarily fight choreography or whatever, but it was still choreographed. It was still choreographed, choreographed and yeah. stuff. Uh, that's it was still choreographed and stuff. 
was the jumping out of the plane. And of course, Tommy gets a skyboard because he's Tommy fucking Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I kind of wish he'd have brought that back as like, I don't know, as, as, as a ranger gadget or something later for when he comes back as a ranger or something. Like he developed it into ranger tech. That would have been awesome. That would have been kind of cool. <laughs> So he's kind of well, like the Power Ranger version of the new Goblin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you, I thought you meant just using like a snowboard. I was gonna say they live in California. It never snows. That like, make him useless. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. But yeah, um, I, I certainly I certainly agree. Those opening scenes, both that and the rollerblading scene afterward, were very well choreographed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm probably what it was good. Uh, even though they skated at least over half the CBD of Sydney at the time. Yeah, and the rollerblades, and, and and again, there was more of a point to it. Again, we'll get to that in the behind the scenes stuff. But in terms of the plane stuff, that was very well considering that half of it, the actors themselves, were, you know, they were never actually in the air. They were on wires in front of a green screen, and professionals yeah. were doing the actual jumping out of the plane. So, nice. and as when I was watching this with James Phoenix, I have to point out, is it just me, or is it, is it the only ever time we ever see the Rangers do anything to do with roller skating, or rollerblading? It's when Rocky, Adam, and Aisha were there. Yep. That's it. Literally, that's their introduction yes. into the series, and that's the introduction into the film. Yep. <laughs> Probably because point. Sabonid wanted them to be extreme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see him coming out with barbed wire two by fours. <laughs> different, different extreme. <laughs> Dude, extreme rollerblading is awesome. Yeah, I'm really like that. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, more like, more like Ninja Storm. Alpha teens. At least they weren't Alpha Teens. Oh, God. J-Dub F. J-Dub F. J-Dub F. <laughs> but since we're talking about rollerblading and the, the aerial stuff, let's go on to design. We can talk about the design of this movie. The design of... Particularly the big thing we're going to talk about is the suits. And I know Mole has likes the suits and stuff and wants to speak about that. So let's kick it off with that. Take it away, Mole. I love the suits in this one. The suits in Power Rangers, in my honest opinion, have never looked better than they did in this film. And while they're not exactly made of metal in real life, you got the idea they were metal, and this technically goes into sound, but it's part of the design of the suits. Because when they moved, you got a clanging sound that made it seem like it was metallic. The suits just look badass as fuck. Mm. I got no arguments there. I agree. Even for <coughs> Bandex, leather, and PVC. Mm-hmm. And in all fairness, you gotta be impressed. You gotta be impressed at how good the suits look in the movie, considering how very easily they fell the fuck apart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, such as uh, that one stunty always not, ripping drawn. Yeah, that'll be in the behind the scenes section, Taji. <laughs> and that means we have that means we have Kimberly. In PVC and leather with a whip. Only good things can come from this. That's one of the things I wanted to mention. The the little gadgets. <sighs> okay, yeah, Kimberly with a whip, cool, but did they really need to give little fucking gadgets just so they could sell toys? Seriously? <laughs> they they weren't right. even in the toy line. They Honestly, didn't make toys of them? What was the purpose then? Honestly, I liked the gadgets as to me it showed each ranger had a function within this team, so it was more except like a covert Adam. group. Except Adam. Yeah, but it, I was saying, like, like, like a covert group and stuff, because when they're in the mm -hmm. dark, you see, like, the spotlights from Aisha's headlights and stuff. That's what I was saying. It, Rocky it, scanner. Yeah, and yeah. I was saying, it, it, looked cool. it just looked cool, and it made them seem more like a tight-fitted covert group that needed each other to function. Yeah, Adam mm -hmm. doesn't need Adam doesn't need gimmicky stuff. He goes in, kicks ass, and leaves. For Maybe as a frog, job done. as a frog. For Rocky Scanner is he the only one with the scanner then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why does it have his name on it? Like, are they gonna forget who has it? Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll get into that. I, noticed that. I guess we can talk about like, that here, uh -oh. Jim. <laughs> I'll just mention now one, a little behind the scenes note. Initially, when the script was written, all the Rangers were going to have a specific helmet gadget. I believe a lot of them were going to have that scanner. So it was to differentiate between the different scanners. When the script was rewritten, Rocky ended up being the only one with the scanner and Aisha having the headlights. And so to make up for the fact that the other Rangers and Tommy had Saba, so to make up for the other Rangers not having the helmet gadgets they were supposed to, Billy got the Stega Stinger and Kim got the whip. Sorry, what was Sorry. that? No, no. So I was just going to point out that 
but Sabo wasn't made for the film. He's actually in the TV show. I know, but it gave some, it gave Tommy some cool gadget to use. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I would assume then that they had completed the uh, the 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 shot and CG effect for um, the scanner, and so they just decided to keep using it, even though <laughs> it didn't really make sense to have his name on it. Mm. <clears throat> I'm poor Adam got left out of the loop. Do you guys remember mind? when Kimberly Always. had her stegus, her uh, what it was, a pterodactyl thunder whip? Correct. And do you guys, when she, when she like uh, pulls it back in, if she's done using it, do you guys notice her arm looks like it's robotic? <laughs> no, I maybe that's of. another gadget she has. Is a robot? Yeah, <laughs> like she has three arms. <laughs> it's like it, it, it's skinnier than like her normal arm is. It just it look it looks kind of weird. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. And I was going to suggest. Mm-hmm. I was going to suggest maybe Rocky put his name in his visor himself, so just so in the event he ever got peace conference, the next Ranger would be completely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> there you that go. would be hilarious. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> or in Rocky's case, karate tournamented. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Ow, my back. Well, no, reference just... that one later. <laughs> we'll explain exactly. that one later. And yes, we'll get to that in the next movie. <laughs> and actually, I have a, a fun little fact about that that we'll get to later, because I watched some of the panels. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> also in the design, this is one thing I would like to talk about. That hideous-looking Ninja Megazord. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Considering they already had gone over budget, <clears throat> and the CGI at the time was going to be really fucking expensive, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. They had to cut corners somewhere. Did they have to go with liquid metal? I mean, I know it was the in thing, but <laughs> even by 90 standards, that thing was hideous. The Zords See, looked okay. It was just yes. the Megazord that. Yeah, the Zords looked, looked fine. Yeah, when the Zords yeah. looked fine. Because I was like, ooh, they're going to combine. And then. <laughs> really? <Wrap> that. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, like, no. You're like, yeah. They fuse together. You go, no, go back. Go back. Yeah. And the other thing right. is, you can plainly, you can outright tell this is an American design Zord instead of a Japanese design Zord because they have the emergency knee to the groin button installed in the woman's <laughs> cockpit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh was, yes. Yep. And I was going to say, about, control panel. Yep. I was going to say, as we discussed when before this, when we talked about our thoughts and stuff. Your may, your mileage may vary on that one due to the fact, as I pointed out, as a kid watching this in the cinema, I'm sorry, that Megazord scene was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. Now I'll look at it and I'll admit it looks like ass. But as a kid at the time, which was its audience, it looked great. It looked amazing. Yeah. It, it did its job. Yeah. And honestly, it also, it, honestly, in retrospective, it probably also looked amazing for the CGI ability at the time, so... True to a point, but yeah, not um, the yeah, not animation. Well, animation wise, I just I still think that it's too chromey, even for yeah. the time. Mm. Yeah, the mocap what? was decent. You know the way the the robot moved and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, they mocap for that, but just the design overall. First of all, <clears throat> you can for, first of all when they're combined, the way they designed it, you can quite plainly tell that they're a bunch of pieces coming together, whereas they should have yeah. like one cohesive robot, and it didn't, because you can see the joints where they connect, which is always bad design, in my opinion. And yeah. like Richter mentioned, just the chrome, it was... It's it's the same complaint that Mole had um, with taking G1 Optimus Prime in the Transformers game and shining him up all the way. It just doesn't look right. It's too shiny. It's, yep, which my... Yeah. Which my theory with that, though, I was just going to slightly disagree with James. I'm just going to say, as much as I said it, it did look amazing when I was that age. However, it was not the cut. It was not the best CGI I could do at that time. And I know this is going to date me, but as a kid, my favorite CGI experience in the cinema was watching a live-action Casper the Friendly Ghost film. I'd be like, "Whoa, it was actually Casper." I that looks cool. Like, I can see why. I've seen that, but yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, they, they, there was some good CGI at the time. It just this is just yeah. even by those standards, no. <laughs> and and yeah. then you Another saw the C- problem with the CGI Megazord. Mm-hmm. The frog <clears throat> joint, the frog waist, it was way too thin compared to the toy line or even the show itself. 
the, the Zord as Mega Zord as a whole was just too thin because they showed the joints. Because it looks like what they literally did is they took the models of each of the Zords and literally shoved them together and did not make it look like a cohesive robot. Yeah, but if you oh, look at oh. it, you mm -hmm. can just barely see the front of the Frog Zord forming basically the hips right. of the Mega Zord, and he's got friggin' ballerina waist and hips. <laughs> He's got a friggin' ballerina waist and hips from the frog. No, you don't know that. Maybe he's got the, uh, the, 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 the super speed skinny mode from Ninja Storm. <laughs> that wasn't a, invented at the time. <clears throat> I think what they were oh, sorry. I think what they were trying to go for is they were trying to go for something a little more streamlined because it's supposed to be a Ninja Megazord, but no. Well, no, uh, for me, <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Sorry, Hammer. Say, oh, uh, I was just gonna say that real quick. For me, design-wise, I didn't like the head because normally, you know, when the piece forms the head, like a face folds out and that's fine, but it just didn't look right. And one thing that was always offsetting to me dealing with just how it looks is only really two parts had a color. You know, uh, Billy's Wolf and uh, whatever Rocky had, the rest were yeah. just like, yeah, hey. we're just like white and silver. So it just, the arms stood out so much because they had a color that was so different. Uh, can, I oh, point out, yes, can I point out, if they yep. were white and silver, then Tommy still had the correct color. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. There was but logic still, it says. blends in so much. Yeah, the mm. other thing, too, is, is these are supposed to be ancient Zords, ancient power. They they come out from wherever they are, and they're shiny, like new, like right off the production line, really. Yeah. Well, in all fairness, they got the great power. For all we we don't know much about the great power, it's not elaborated on. So for all we know, the great power is just in itself a power, and it adapts itself to whoever happens to get it. This so it might have simply adapted itself to the power and just said, okay, they need these suits and they need these big fighting vehicles, so we're going to turn into those, and they're going to be shiny and new because we're turning into them for the first time. Maybe and, the great power literally gave them a buff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like. It's like even even Zordon was supposed to be this ancient being. He still hung out in a shiny, awesome command center with, with, with an alpha and a tube that looked better than the show ever did. Loved the yeah, command center. Exactly. Yeah, the command center. The let's command about, center looked good. Let's talk about Zordon for a minute. Yes, the command center looked awesome. But am I the only one who thought that the Zordon in the movie looked totally worse than the TV show? No, I, no. I think I agree. That pig nose. I just, yeah. See, I just, he I had better lip syncing. See, yes. that, that's why. Yeah. See, what Aeon just said then was what I was going to say. He had better lip syncing. He had better emotions on his face. You could see his face better. When you look at Zordon on the TV show, it looks like someone's just badly photo, like cut out basically a photo in like paint or something, not been bothered cleaning up the edges and shoved it on a tube. Yeah, but at least yeah, I, the TV I, show Zordon, you can at least stand to see his face. I, well, I kind of like the TV. I kind of like the TV show better. He looks a little bit more mysterious, if that makes sense. And it's like a cloudy tube, so I would I would expect not to be able to see him very well. I don't know. That's just yeah. Me. As any goldfish owner will tell you, that's what happens if you don't clean up the tubes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I did not but, like Zordon. It's just, like, the pig nose just ruined it. It's like, I can't, okay, I can't even appreciate... <clears throat> excuse me. I can't even appreciate all the cleaning up and stuff they did with the face and stuff. Because I can't stand to look at the face with a damn nose. What he's pig just, nose? He's got a yeah. pig nose. Yeah, it looks kind of like a pig nose. Thing. It looks, he looks like he's squashed up against the tube. And it's just like, no, no, <laughs> that, it's not right. It, it only looks that way because you're looking at it from the camera on the ground. So you're looking up at him. That's the only reason it looks that way. And that's why it looks bad. Yeah, all right. Bad cinematography. You want to go yes. insult the man? You, you want to go insult the man's face? Go ahead. No, I'm just what they did to the man's face. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, the command center I thought was designed very well. I love the command center in this movie. Like, I thought it was far better, better than the one on the show. Yeah, I like better the than the power the chamber. Little... Oh yeah, definitely yes. better than the power chamber. But again, that's because they had a budget. Mm. Yeah, it's my second favorite so power ranger. Yeah, it's my second favorite command center used for Mighty Morphin. Well, Tommy, uh, Power it? Rangers, sorry. My first would be Zeo, just because I loved seeing the classic suits in the background. That was pretty that was... awesome. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Tommy's basement. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, design. I did ask... the... Oh, go ahead. 
yeah, I do love the fact that Tommy's basement in Dino Thunder is basically the Bat Cave. Yeah. <laughs> but He's does... basically friggin' Batman. Yep, but design element, what did you guys think of the ooze? Oh, yeah. I wanted to put... Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, the ooze no. is back. Not Ivan ooze, the actual <laughs> ooze. The actual ooze, I wanted to oh. put the toaster, turn on the radio, and see if it danced. Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't like the way it looked when he was uh, breaking into the command center and, like, how it, how it like, kind of bubbled up and formed him. I thought that was that didn't look too well. Well, again, terrible CGI effects of the 90s. True. Indeed. And speaking of Ivan ooze, what did you guys think of Ivan ooze, the, the design of the villain himself? I think it looked really good. I liked him. Yeah, I like Ivan, but I have to ask. Virus. <laughs> yep, I like Ivan, but I have to ask based on the scene Matt just mentioned. When he oozed through the door and we still see loads of it on the door, shouldn't when he reformed, shouldn't he be missing like a leg or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. That was just his sweat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't forget, they still have about half an egg full of ooze at the construction <clears throat> site. And yep. all the ooze on the inside of the top half. Of the eggshell as well. Plus, plus, we pretty much confirmed that Ivan can pretty much produce as much ooze as he wants, considering he jarred it and started giving it to children. <laughs> yep. And, and, and he used his ooze <clears throat> not to form the fingers. Or Tengu, I yeah, should that say, too. sorry. Yep. And, and he uh, used purple lightning to form the ooze lings, or ooze men. Yep, and as I'd like See, to mention... Oh, go ahead. So I was going to say, a rather disturbing and creepy thing, I just realised Ivan ooze goes it goes away in privacy and comes back with his juices in a jar which he then gives to kids. <laughs> yep. Hey 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 this is supposed to be a PG man. Yeah where's Chris Hansen when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they make it in a factory though? Yep. Yeah after they started <laughs> constructing the ectomorphic titans. Yeah let the mm -hmm. ooze flow. <laughs> what are you doing? Let the flow. Actually, Ivan just kind of made it appear because Ivan had to make it appear and give it to the kids to give it to their parents, hypnotize them to get them to dig up the ectomorphicons in near the factory. So technically, he had to generate the ooze first because we all we know is that um, is, it, is that we see them up on the moon, and after they send the tangas away. And he goes, oh, I need to dig up my ectomorphicons. I know I'll recruit the parents of Angel Grove. And Goldar goes, no offense, sir, but they might find you a little disgusting. Oh, well, I suppose well, you'd you be the experts on that. On that. <laughs> and so, you forget, I'm a master of disguise. How could I forget? I, I never knew. Never knew. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, and then we cut to the Rangers when we come back to Ivan. It's on the freaking viewing globe in the command center where he's wizard dude giving out news. So. Yeah. Yeah, he just looks like himself in a wizard outfit. But as I was gonna say, There's I got a, we'll get there. I got a total Mel Brooks feel from Ivan News. And then when he went into oh, the whole yeah. merchandising thing of giving these to the kids and selling it to the kids and stuff, it's like, yeah, you're totally Mel Brooks, dude. <laughs> See, I was saying, gals and guys, gather around and feast your eyes, because you know you just can't lose when you've got your own supply of Ivan News. Wow. Wow. Well, tell your friends. Well, you got yours. The fun it's never. Fun. Friends. Yes, and more. Take it home and say? Say? Take it home with a case. Your parents <laughs> try to stop you. Just throw it in their faces. Yeah, faces. Well, I can't believe you guys remember all that. But anyway, more. Go ahead. Yeah. True I fans. Say, see, see, I was going to say, basically, I was going to wait till we did the character, but if we're talking personality-wise now, I was going to say, to me, he always reminded me of a PG Freddy Krueger. He even does the My Nightmare line. It's not just that line. Well, it's how he acts and interacts. He's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, how he interacts and does all the stuff, it reminds me of a PG Freddy. Welcome to my nightmare! <laughs> bye bye, I kitties! But yeah, is there anything else in the design aspects of this movie that anyone wants to bring up? Um, actually, I, I have something. Yes. Um, I, yes. I know we had talked about this. Um, I know a number of people, uh, I don't remember who it was, it might have been Mole, I'm not sure. I know we discussed this before. Somebody said they greatly disliked the design of the Ooze Men. That was me. I didn't like the, how the Ooze Men looked. Yeah. I know, However, I did what? Sorry, go ahead. So no, you go. You you were continuing with the Ooze Men. I'll go after you. No, no, I just I was gonna keep. I was just gonna. Yeah, the thing about the Ooze Men is they they were designed to basically look like look like Ivan as much as they could. And again, 
We'll get to the behind the scenes, but they were designed at the last minute because the previous creature was supposed to be there ended up looking like crap. So they redesigned <laughs> to make it. They were designed Usman as a last minute replacement. They're basically just mini versions of Ivan that looked kind of weird. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, like no, no, they, they could have done better on that. <laughs> you're not, you're not lying to me, are you, you dirty rat? <laughs> <laughs> In joke, we'll, we'll get, get to those place. guys later. I know, but I was going to say, design wise, <laughs> I loved Zed in this film. How he looked, I like how Rita looked. I like how Goldar looked. I loved, loved, loved the Evil Moon base. That's yeah, never yeah. looked so fucking awesome. The base, the base look awesome. I have to say, I didn't like Goldar's look. I thought he was too armored and too clean, if that makes sense. And he was short. He, he didn't. He didn't look tall enough to me. Mm. Yeah, for me, yeah, I, I, well, his face didn't look right. Well, it's because they know, yeah, gave him a Gold- bigger helmet. Yeah, but I don't know. Goldor, I didn't really like. Zed, I thought looked awesome. The moon he base did. looked awesome, but I didn't really like the Zords or the suits that much. But Zed, oh, I wish they'd kept that suit. <laughs> yeah. It was a good suit. And I will say, the, yeah. the liquid chrome they did for the CG on the Zords, getting back to that really quick, I thought it worked really well for the Ectomorphicons. I thought I thought they looked awesome and it worked for them, but not for the Zords. Yeah. <laughs> Are the Ectomorphicons yeah, like, like the Chelsea <laughs> yeah. or the Cybertron? <laughs> that <laughs> would be awesome. It's the off years yeah. for Power Morphicon, that's what they call it. <clears throat> Guys, yes. basically, we liked the sets, we didn't like the CGI. That's what Pretty we call yeah. our Mighty Morphin to that the sounds, movie. Too. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Uh, yes, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no because, like I said, I like the Zords. I may not like them now, but I mean, still remember as a kid loving how they looked in that film. Mm. Yeah, as I said, we can boil it all down. The general mm. concession: we like the sets. The CGI was meh, even mm. for the time. It depends yeah. on what it what it is. The Ectomorphicons yeah. looked good. The Zords looked good. The Megazord, eh. mm. crap. <laughs> I still, went to, twisted. I still went to McDonald's and got a blue, a Billy Blue Ranger figure and a Wolf Zord in my Happy Meal. Speaking of which, you can get Power Rangers now in your Happy Meal. Yes, Power Rangers Samurai available now at McDonald's Super Samurai. Super, Super Samurai, Samurai, even better. Yes, moving more on. More super than before. <laughs> yes, more super. No, I'm not going to sing that. Um, well, I guess I could because we're moving on to sound design, a.k.a. the sound and the music for this movie. Which, yeah, the music was pretty good. The sound effects were about standard for Power Rangers. Um, I don't know what you guys think. They've got a power in force that you've never, never seen, seen before. before. Yeah, that was, was a like, good song. Yeah, the, yeah, the film was, was I believe the film was actually the the, the 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 first time we ever heard Wasserman's full length version of the theme song. So, with yeah, with the I will. Work. I will say though, I guess I have the CD. If the, if the soundtrack, I can't remember being used in the film, but it's on the soundtrack. His song is not the best song on that soundtrack. What do we you have a Van Halen, We have a Van Halen song, Dreams. Dreams. Which technically, yeah, I was saying Dreams. Which and that technically, was used right at the end. Taji, yeah, stop. I, was say, talk. I was saying, technically, it's 1986, so it's not really Van Halen. It's more Van Hagar. If you're an older fan, you'll get that, but still. Mm-hmm. By the way, for those of you who are Ron Wasserman fans, he is doing remixes of that entire album. They are the ones he has up right now are awesome. They are just completely awesome, today. and they're incomplete. They're, he said they're um, just the board mixes, which is right off the board. There's no effects in it. It's not cleaned up at all, and they but sound the amazing. They're still badass. And I will put a link below. For those I at least interested. give them credit for the songs that they that they have on the soundtrack, at least to me, seem like they were actually in the movie. And so it makes it a step ahead of the Pokemon movies where they just kind of cram the soundtrack during the credits. So Pretty much. Yeah. they get a plus yeah. for actually using the songs. Such as Debo yeah. during the initial fight scene in the construction yeah. site. Yeah. Action mm-hmm. boy now. Nah. Action I had a pretty good soundtrack. Be prepared to climb another yeah, mountain. The ocean. <laughs> oh, you're <ready. laughs> I also put it to everyone here, the Power Rangers the movie soundtrack is the only pl- soundtrack in the world I can think of where you'll have both Van Halen and uh oh, we're in trouble on the same CD. 
shampoo. You also, you also get I yeah 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 yeah. That song was epic. Yeah. The Alpha song. Yes. Just in case anybody was wondering, this category, by the way, is to have the DVD box handy. The music in this movie was done by a Graham Ravel, and the music supervisor was someone named Happy Walters. And I'm not making that up. <laughs> hey, then. Happy I did like the, uh, the like right. the instrumentals they had. Yeah, I agree. I think I, I really like the awesome instrumental when there's like that really nice. Uh, I guess it's like a flute play when they unlock the great power and the golden ad power idols are flying. Yeah. That triumphant yeah. music—that's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. One place where this movie shines is the sound design. It's just and it's, from and the, the same... music to the sound effects. I mean, it, one thing I will give this movie is the sound design is amazing with this movie. Oh, yeah. And and that same song when they when they when they resurrect Zordon at the end of the movie, that same song plays it's really mm-hmm. awesome. They See, just resurrected that, that. Zordon before the big final fight, but we'll get. Eh. We will get to that. We'll and speaking that. of that, the writing. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying, uh, sound effects wise, mm-hmm. I loved the sound effects in this movie because they do exactly what they're supposed to. Like I mentioned, the suits, you got this, you got a real sense of okay, these are these are metallic armor suits due to the sound effects. When the Falcon Zord comes in and it does the and it makes all the right noises and stuff, it sounds like a metallic machine that's got like a real mm, horsepower to it. I love that. Oh, actually. Last thing about the sound design, this movie with its sound design really made me want to see the Green Ranger in a movie just to hear what they would have done with the sounds for the Green Ranger. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, you mean the sounds for... Yes, that. <laughs> Dragon Dagger, try... Sally, out of sale at the moment. As long as this they didn't the try original. and include... Yeah, as long as they didn't try and include another pop song with him, he starts to play the flute and it's something like lollipop, lollipop, lollipop. <laughs> Someone needs to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what need, you know what they need to do in a movie? They want to make it awesome. They need to have Tommy, they need to have Green Ranger in a movie, have him pull a dragon dagger out, go to play the flute, and to the dragon dagger sound, it needs to be the flute song from Picard's flute from Star Trek. Wow, and then the dragon sword cries. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, as that is long... a powering fucking song. Yeah, I was gonna say, as long as they don't use Merrick's flute from Wild Force. Yeah, yeah. How about the poker flute to wake up Snorlax? Yeah. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. If we find an Englishman dead, it's all Aeon's fault. <laughs> anyway, the writing comments. Uh, I think uh, Ivan Ooze, out of all of them, had some of the best lines. My and personal favorite Ooze. is when Rocky goes, uh, yeah, we're the Power Rangers. And he goes, whoa, where's my autograph like, book? <laughs> like, he was, actually, it, it was a perfect mix of like him being menacing, but he was also funny at the same time. The reason for that is because I'm relatively sure that Paul Freeman improvised most of his dialogue. <laughs> Especially oh, really? the Brady Bunch reunion line. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that did add in itself. I think a lot of his the jokes that he threw in were improvised stuff that he just came up with as he was going along. That's why it sounded natural because he was just making it up as he went along. Now here's a question, Mr. Walking Encyclopedia over there. Yes, did he? <laughs> what was that? Um, the, my question is, it, since he improvised a lot of his stuff, did he improvise Ivan's sales pitch? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. It he sounds so natural, just the way it's he delivers it. Knowing Paul Freeman, he may have. That'd be awesome. Writing wise, I, I liked all the dialogue and stuff in this. As in terms of Power Rangers, it seemed better written than the TV show. Mm-hmm. To the point where I'm gonna say, Ivan Ooze was a much better Lothar years before Lothar was even existed. I can, he broke I, the fourth wall, he did the jokes, and yet he didn't get on my nerves to the point where I just wanted to reach through the TV and punch him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most fun I've had all movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> in, 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 What's in, that um, odious stench? Smells like teenagers. teenagers. And, and, uh, and all fairness to the writing of the film, um, in terms of the actual plot that was written... Um, we'll get to this in a minute, but a lot of it was cut out and left on the editing floor in terms of the actual plot and backstory of the film. 
So while the writing itself in terms of the dialogue was good, in terms of the actual plot of the film, a lot of it ended up cut out. So if it, if it seems light on plot, that's the reason why.